Good morning, everybody. Get ready for another episode of live trading. I'm going to do my best Mitch impression today. Me and Cleo are here waiting to hit some more trades. I got Zunaid in the background. We got you all covered. Small account, market happenings, the whole nine yards. We're glad that you're here. Live trading starts now. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Those words have been dancing around my head all night. I mean, it's Vegas lore, that phrase. Hello, up, everybody. Buddy? Echo. Do I have an echo? Nobody. You guys. No echo on my end. Um, but look, since Mitch isn't here, I say we just uh, watch Scooby Doo, or SpongeBob, or Fairly Odd Parents. I mean, that was a favorite of mine growing up. No, we're we're gonna we're gonna make some money. They didn't come here to watch any of that. They came here to make some money, and that's what we're gonna do here, Zunaid. Thank you, everyone, for joining us again. Mitch is at VCon. Uh, I'm your host Ryan with my co-host Zunaid here. We're gonna hold the fort down for you and do some trading. Cleo's in the background. He's all excited to pick some more stocks. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, before we get going here, I, of course, want to remember or want to remind you, we are sponsored by Moomoo, a nice, awesome broker. And right now you can get up to 15 free stocks just for opening an account with Moomoo and making your initial deposit. If you're interested, check out the link below or scan the QR code on the screen. If you're interested in Moomoo and the benefits it has to offer, click the link in the description where after opening an account and depositing, you'll be able to earn up to 15 free stocks. I've already got some of those free stocks, so pretty cool. Um, check out the link down below for more information about Moomoo. Get your free stocks here today. All right, Zunaid. What's up? How are you doing this morning, my man? You, you ready to go? I am ready to rock and roll. I can go ahead and get us started here. So uh, this time I've got my charts on the other screen. I need to have it on this screen. All right. So this is what I had on the SPY, right? We talked about it yesterday, the trend lines that we've got. Um, and you can see this nice little alarm clock telling me that, hey, I've got an alert set whenever we cross this upper side. Uh, and then right at the end, we go ahead and break it, come back to retest it and reject it in the after hours. But then come today we do go right back in that range. So uh, no real action there. Again, we will be interested to see how things play out as we get closer and closer um, to kind of getting that squeeze. Now, look, I'm no, I'm no CMT, or I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but this is the crayon drawing that I have out at the moment. We will see how it plays out. So that's what I've got. The uh, 412 level has just been insane in terms of uh, trying to get over it. You can see how insane it was in trying to support and now it's in resistance mode, and now we're slightly above it. And what you can see right there is that we got above it here, and then we had a retest of the 412, and now we're headed towards the upside. So we can see um, that that's the action going on, and then when the bell starts or when the bell opens, we'll see how things play out. Let's go ahead and talk about Google as the 120 area is something to keep in mind. You can see we kind of popped above, held the support, but then immediately... Uh, towards the end of the day, came right back down. And now we're having a little bit of trouble getting it past the 120 area. So let me go ahead and set my cute little lines there, set an alert in case it does want to pop above. But that's something to keep in mind on um, on Google. On in, not, Was it AMD? It was AMD yesterday. A little upsetting because we never got a true test of 100. So you can see here on the 15-minute, rather, uh, it popped up. I had my alert set to purchase some shares at about a hundred. Unfortunately, it only came down to like 123 and then it just had a nice little move up all the way up for three bucks to the upside. So that's the move there. If it does want to go ahead and break, I would say approximately, eh, we'll call it about 103 30, about 103. Then we can maybe have a little bit of a chance to play this to say 105 or something like that. And you can maybe have 101s be of interest in terms of support. But again, I like my whole number of 100 to have a little bit more success. NVIDIA, nice little move towards the 298. Thought it was going to reach 300 and tag it, but it said no thank you. And to the downside, that one came. Uh, if it does go ahead and break 298, I think, I think 300 is a magnet, right? Like that's just got to happen at that point. So we'll go ahead and set our alerts there. 292 support support uh we'll see how things play out at that level let's go ahead and check out paypal this one here um you have a little bit of support that came in around the 6082 but i do expect this 6150 
to go ahead and stay resistance. You can see resistance, 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 held a support, popped down, or excuse me, came down, and you've got resistance right there as well. So we'll see how it wants to behave around this level, uh, the 6150 on PayPal. Let's go and take a look at Tesla as Tesla is looking to pop above the 170. That's an area to keep in mind if you want to move on up to the upside. So we'll go ahead and set our alerts there. The SPY has kind of had, I think we know we talked about the SPY. Well, let me come back to this here in a second. There we go. So the SPY, you, you can see that we've kind of had a uh, double inside day, right? So this is one candle. That's one inside day, and that's the second inside day that we just dealt with yesterday. Barely, I believe. We'd have to double check and see if that actually did break or if that's some after hours action that's included in that or not. Um, but that's just something to kind of keep in mind. It has been a tight, tight range. And again, that's the reason I'm asking, which way do we end up going? Uh, that's something to keep in mind. And then where is, so you can see how the spy was yesterday, right? It kind of chopped around like onions. But then if you go ahead and take a look at the cues, the cues actually had a decent little move. I got a chance to play this 328 break uh, to the upside for 50 cents or so. I wanted a dollar, so I broke even on the rest of it. But the cues have been moving a little bit more fluid than the spy has. So that's kind of something to keep in mind. And then uh, PacW is a stock that we traded yesterday and made some money on it. It might be a stock that I get into right now, actually and see if we can make some money on it with a stop loss, possibly around the 480. So matter of fact, when I turn it over to Ryan, I'm going to try to get into this position because um, on here, I can't get into it with uh, in the pre-market. I have to go to the actual trade station thing. Um, so we'll pull that up here in a second. I think there's one more stock I wanted to go over, and that was Apple. This 171 level, we'll see how it wants to behave. If it does come down to it and test it, um, you can see you had support right there. I'm not sure what this wick is. It's after hours, it looks like. And here again, you're finding a little bit of support at that 171 level. So I'll keep an eye on that. And then we played PHIO yesterday, uh, made some money off of the four hour level. That's kind of where it is right now. Let's go ahead and remove those drawings. I don't think it's a focus of mine today, but if it does want to continue running, we can surely go ahead and try to participate in that. And then after $2 broke, you retested two on uh, Mike's. And then it just came to the downside. So that's kind of pretty much all I have here. I'm going to go ahead and, again, purchase some shares in PacW. Uh, and I'll report back once that's filled. Ryan, if you want to go, I can come back uh, after you're done and take a look at some other stocks as well. Let's do it, my man. Uh, let's first start with the SPY. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, fellow DGen Silver Fox Trading. Good morning, Kel. Thank you for all of the nice words. Good morning, Mike Crow, Walter, Shannon, Raz. Bernard, the postman, Paul, and everyone else. Good morning. All right, let's take a look at the spy here. Uh, first things first, I'm still going to use the trend line here. Um, we're really kind of trading sideways right now. Yesterday, we actually broke the pattern of these long bottom wicks. It looked like we were going to roll over today. And here we come in and the market's up this morning. Dow futures up 165 points. S&P futures up 17 and a quarter point here this morning. So it'll be interesting to me to see if we hold this gain. What we're seeing so far really fits into the chop that we have been seeing so far. So uh, I also added this purple box. This was a result of the happy hour discussion about the SPY yesterday. This is our sideways area that's pretty much been going on from the beginning of the year. Uh, we did have this one little sell-off where we bounced off 384, but we're, for the most part, right in this sideways trading range. So until we break out of this, I'm not really confident saying that the market's going to do one thing or another, because it's really showing us that it's going back and forth. This range here is pretty big, too. Bottom of this range here is 404. Top of the range here is 418. So we're looking at about... 12 points, 14 points there. Um, so anyway, we'll see where the SPY goes. I'm going to keep monitoring this. We watch this every day. Uh, the way that I play these is I often use one of the ETFs. We talk a lot about the Q ETFs, the SQQQ and TQQQ. And then we also talk a lot about the semiconductor ETFs. Those are levered and they give me a technology angle that I feel I have a better uh, chance at. So that's why I'm not playing SPXL and SPXS. Uh, I don't know if we've talked about that quite enough, but in any case, that's that's the motivation there. Um, so the SPY, the big thing for me here today, do we hold these gains? Do we hold these gains? Do we maybe trade up a little bit more? Does the market reverse? Um, I'm not really loaded into any big position. And the thing that I'm going to be looking for here are small caps. So I should be able to kind of dance around that. But I really want to pay attention to that. Um, okay. 
<clears throat> let's take a look at the movers. And the first thing that I want to bring to your attention is X4. If you recall yesterday, I was stopped out of this trade in the small account challenge for a $23 loss or so. Um, in fact, I think I've got it right here. Let me go ahead and add this to the stream and make it full screen. Small account is currently sitting at 578. So we're still above the initial, but we took a loss yesterday. I've got two day trades remaining. We're definitely going to look for something here today. Um, X4 was the play yesterday. Remember, I said that Cleo liked this. We talked about this yesterday. He was cheapened when I was talking about entering it. Uh, I ended up taking a loss, but look what happened. It worked. Later on in the day, we popped up to that 183. Now, we weren't able to break it. We broke it today in the pre-market and came back in. So that 183 level is still going to be in play here. But this trade ended up working. We got everything that we were looking for. We got a consolidation and a push out of the consolidation on big volume that popped us up to the resistance level. It was right there. I just got shaken from it too early. So the takeaway from yesterday's loss, because we're going to turn every loss into a lesson so that it's valuable, the takeaway from yesterday's loss is kind of what we discussed live in the show. I was not patient enough. I had three day trades. I was ready to go, you know, all this stuff. So I just entered it a little too early. Had I have waited and waited for a pullback towards VWAP and been a little bit more patient with this, this likely would have been a winner, maybe a $20 or $30 winner and a $50 swing potentially in the small account. So it just goes to show you how risk management and patience can really change a trade. This trade worked, but I took a loss on it because I sold simply too early. So the lesson is we're going to try to be a little bit more patient today. We'll see how that goes. It is an ongoing battle every day. By the way, X4 is in play here today. Again, that 183 level we discussed yesterday is going to be pretty important. And the high from the pre-market here is 197. So if we're able to take 183 out, I think two might be in play today, especially depending on the momentum. Don't have a lot of volume yet, but we'll see what happens when the market opens. Now, as far as new plays, we do have a couple here uh, on the list. Um, first one here is going to be EPOW, E-P-O-W. Now this popped as high, this is Sunrise New Energy. It's popped as high as 292, came all the way back into the 250 support. We're actually pushing away from VWAP here. So to me, we're kind of in no man's land right now. I would really like this to come back in towards a 260 handle before taking out 279. This would kind of just play into my patience strategy that I'm trying to execute here today. Maybe it won't happen right away. Maybe it will run out of the gate and then come back and, and pull back to that level we'll see if it does that and it holds that and it starts to curl and get expanding volume i think we're going to be in good shape on epow next here is going to be smfl and that's smart for life this popped as high as 390 earlier today came back in found some support at that three level i have it marked as 297 but we can just call it three and then it also found some resistance here at 327 so we're right by the view app we're actually in a pretty good spot let's see what happens when the market opens here uh, i did notice that we did have an exclusive here a uh, shout out to our news desk team here at benzinga they had an exclusive before the press release even came out so that's pretty cool now i didn't play this in the pre-market so uh, this news is all the same at this point. I uh, wasn't early to it, but we'll see how much carry this actually has in the market. Um, Smart Life announces to Benzinga a partnership with Cloud Kitchens, enabling the delivery of the company's ice cream bars through services such as Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. Side note here, let me know in the chat if you folks have ever ordered ice cream from Instacart, DoorDash. My worry is that it would always show up melted. But you let me know if you have a different experience. Next here is going to be SVRE, and this is Sav Saver 1 2014. We're as high as 193 earlier. We've came right back in. We're right at the VWAP. So we really want to see what the next move is here. Not a whole lot of um, volume here this morning. So we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, we did have a, a PR here that granted a key new patent in the U.S., which bolsters its position in a transportation safety leader. So it reads nice but don't really have a lot of specifics there. Uh, we'll see if this gives us an opportunity here today. IMPP, this is going to be one of those mini oil plays. We've actually traded this before. Oil is, of course, trading up right now, so that's probably why some of these energy plays are going with it. IMPP, definitely a part of that. This one, I don't really like this one. It, it, we'll see if we end up trading this here today. I would like to stick away because I just have bad memories of the last time that we were trading IMPP, but um, pretty decent range in here. 20 cent range from this break all 
the way up to the pre-market highs. So we'll see if this actually presents a trade. Uh, next, I have Octo. This is eight co holdings. So they were as high as 287, actually a little bit higher up towards that three handle. But they've really come in. This is below VWAP. So unlike some of the other plays that are either at or above VWAP, this one here is below. So let's see if we get any type of buying flow into this thing to take us up to the VWAP. That should give us something tradable. And then... Um, S-I-E-N, I'm not really feeling here today. Kind of be careful. GDC is definitely worth mentioning. This has been a trader the past couple of days. Really, what we need to do is retake 746. Looks like we have a pre-market high of 787. So we'll see if GDC gets going here today. Um, you guys talked about a couple other ones. I'm not really interested in while the bank trade still uh, still kind of hands off there ohm this was a halt fest the other day looks like it's trying to curl but i wouldn't really trust it that's about the best i got i think what we'll do is we'll take a look at the relative volume when the market opens now z we still have four minutes left here just under yeah. four minutes until the market opens do you have something else that you wanted to go over yeah sure i can go over uh the pack w so i like i mentioned uh i was going to go ahead and purchase some shares so i've got 300 shares of pack w ticker p-a-c-w at 502 my stop loss is going to be below this wick here so about 477 therefore for it to be a one-to-one -one trade i'm looking to take gains at approximately 527 which works out well because it's below this wick so as it approaches this 525 area or so i will probably go ahead and lock in gains because if you remember yesterday there were three times where i missed my profits by approximately three cents and in some occasions even one cent if you're someone who's interested in crude oil uh look keep an eye on let me go to the four hour uh, uh and really quickly before up? just just about crude oil yeah, yeah, i yeah. made a mistake and crow corrected me thank you very much crow i said that impp was the stock it's actually immp and it's not an oil name it's immune uh immutep so i completely mixed up the name here uh, PR says Imutep uh, in combination with a bunch of drugs I can't pronounce uh, achieves excellent initial uh, over overall survivor benefit. So I apologize. It's an IMMP, not IMPP, and it's not an oil name. It's a biotech. So Nate, I'm sorry for disrupting the flow there, but I had to correct myself. Nah, dude, you're totally fine. I appreciate you correcting yourself. Uh, keeping an eye on oil, though. So this is the micro uh, crude oil futures for June. 72 is kind of like where you had, you know, you popped up, you had resistance, you popped up, support kind of held there for a bit, held again. And then when it finally went ahead and cracked, now we've had a tough time getting back over the 72. So keep an eye on this level. If we do get above it and on the retest, it could be interesting to try and play this one to the upside. Uh, but there's like a little trend line thing that I had drawn on the four hours. You can see once it kind of broke, kind of played around with it, and now it kind of held it as support. And now to the upside we go. Um, but yeah, main thing that I'm keeping an eye on is going to be pack W and see if we can go ahead and cash in some gains. Uh, by the way, I think we had an exclusive report from Benzinga that we had broke as well on this ticker S M F L, yep. uh, smart for life announces, uh, to Benzinga, a partnership with cloud kitchen, which enables delivery of a uh, company's ice cream bars through services such as Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. So you can see the nice little pop there. If you're interested in playing this one, here's what I've got charted on a nice little trend line. And this is a 15-minute chart. So we can see if it does want to go ahead and pop above VWAP and then make its way towards maybe 350 or so. Um, so this, well, this one could be interesting. Uh, let me see if I want to... Because my risk off would be three bucks, right? So what I'm going to try to do is let's see s m f l let's go ahead and grab about 200 shares what is the uh, price here about 325 right there and then we can grab an additional 300 if it does want to go to about three dollars and one cent and my computer on the screen just freaked out all right you got 45 cool. seconds till the bell so you should be perfect good. Yep, we are good to go. So I already got 200 shares here, looking to purchase another 300 if it comes down to 301. Probably going to try to take gains around uh, three, 345s or 340s or something like that. But here we go. Should get going here in a moment. Less than 30 seconds left. Again, taking a look at the SPY, see how it wants to behave around this uh, trend line if we do go ahead and break it or if we come back down and reject it on that one. And then let's see if there's any other ones that I wanted to keep an eye on. Google was just a beautiful runner yesterday. So we'll see. We've got alerts set. So we should be okay if any stocks decide to go any certain way. Um, and then let's see. Disney. Ooh, Disney. All right. All right. That's we are open, folks. This 
9150 is an area of interest. Du, 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 du. Okay, EPAL first move out of the gate here was up. Uh, let's see, this looks like this is trying to go higher here. Uh, I'm going to really try and practice the lesson that I just told you about. I'm going to try and not be a hypocrite and then immediately get sucked into a play 30 seconds after the market opens here. So I am going to try and exercise some patience and wait for a setup here before I burn another day trade. But EPOW here moving out of the gate. Um, really, the, the spot that we need to take out here is going to be 284. I have high prints at 285, so it looks like it did take that. We'll see if it musters up some strength to take it again. 283, your first spot here on EPOW. Nice smoke tuna. It looks like you're on that one. Good stuff, smoke tuna. Uh, Jay Wild saying O A O M H. I want to say ohm. I think ohm is with an H. So that is also moving towards the highs. We'll see if that bounces here. EPOW coming back in now from that 283 high push. And by the way, uh, Mitch is at VCon. He's holding it down for us. Smash up the likes from a man, Zunade. Yeah, Desi, he... Desi Bahi, is that how you say it? Desi Bahi, where is he? Where is he at? No, I'm, that's you, I thought. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. I just, I, I didn't know if the individual with that name came back again. No, no, no. I, I was just trying to carry the joke over, but it didn't go you. over well. That's quite all right. All right, so on this trend line on uh, SMFL, you can see it's kind of holding as we retest it in the market sections. It could easily break and maybe come back and test three. Who knows? But we were up about 30, 40 bucks on the trade, but we won at 50. Once again, we missed it. Um, so we'll see if that one kind of comes back and reclaims its position above VWAP and continues its move up. But we do have a sh spot there to purchase 300 shares at 301. And then the SPY, Still within that range, nothing crazy happening there. AMD, nothing there. Disney kind of hanging out. Meta, if it wants to go ahead and break this, doesn't this 240 been an issue before? I thought it might have been, maybe I'm wrong. But nonetheless, 240 is an area to keep an eye on. And then it looks like ticker OMH is halted. Wait, what is this ticker? OMH is halted to the downside, by the way. Oh, my home. Okay. I have no idea what this is, but clearly a wild mover. The only way I'd play this one is I like maybe five bucks. That's about it. Appreciate the love, Shannon. Oh, let me go ahead and add. Ooh, oh, come on. We get so close, then we just don't get our targets. Again, hold on that trend home, line for Depot, now. home Depot bouncing out of the open. Uh, we saw Home Depot report earnings yesterday. They it, they were buying it back throughout the course of the day, but uh, really kind of bouncing strong here out of the gate. I think one of the things on Home Depot here, if we clear out this 285.50, we might be able, excuse me, we might be able to return towards that 289 handle. So we'll see if Home Depot keeps up here. Whoa, 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 whoa! How? What's wrong? Can you can you open up your broker and see if uh, SMFL one? Uh, either one just can you see if it crossed three forty seven here at the open SMFL so three forty seven yes it did it looks like it spiked up to three fifty one on a print there was a yeah there was I have let's see what this says I have eighteen hundred shares traded at three fifty one so how is it that it went ahead and traded those many shares above 347, but then I don't get taken out. I don't know. Unless it's an all or nothing and you were asking for more, I'm not really sure. Are these are just normal trades that I always have. I'm not greedy. All right, whatever. Now it's kind of pissing me say. off. I want to go ahead and close it out. All right, we're going to lock in that gain of 40 bucks because I don't know what happened on this week, but we, ooh, glad I did because that ain't looking fun. Because it came back there. Well, at least you got out with something. At least you got yeah. out with some type of gain there. I guess that's the important yeah, part. Yeah, Angela's saying uh, it didn't feel... 
didn't fill yours either. Okay, so that maybe that was maybe there's something odd about the order that took it up there. Um, maybe I don't know. Maybe a late print from the open. I don't know. I I, I really don't know. I'm just guessing. Yeah, I'm not. I sure. don't want to guess. Kind of that was definitely kind of weird. But all right. Anyway, I may very well go ahead and pop above that. But main thing, I hope you all understood why I took that trade in the first place. Right? It was just that trend line that I was playing it at. That's why I purchased it. I was going to purchase more at the three bucks because I was going to be my stop loss right below it. And there's the pop um, once again. But I'm glad I sold because I don't know what just happened there. But AI seems to be moving. So we're one for one. Now let's see what else we can do. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 345 now on SMFL. That just took it out. It's going a little bit higher here. This is a resistance area, though. So it's possible that, that it knifes. Uh, Mots is halted. Yes, Matt. Uh, I have it as a halt here at 934.43, according to Benzinga Pro. Uh, right in my halts tool here, it looks like Mott halted to the upside here on volume at 135. SMFL taking out 350 now. You have, um, there's a 350 on SMFL. Still just kind of wonky and quick spreads, quick hits, quick spikes. Would not be surprised if we get one jolt and we kind of halt up here, especially if we can get past the 350 area, because I'm sure there's shorts that are looking to cover right above this. You're right. And they could just break them out. Let's see. IMMP from the list really doing nothing, just kind of chilling under its VWAP right now. Uh, GDC did push above that 744 level that we talked about. Now, it didn't really run. It actually got rejected at those pre-market highs at about 789. And it's come back in here. But as long as this holds, this is actually pretty good. Maybe we take the top off here. Uh, again, I think my strategy today is not going to be trying the range breaks to the upside, but rather uh, pullbacks or knives to the downside near support. Cleo likes that idea, don't you, Bo? So it's actually pretty funny. He came out of his cage this morning. He was sitting on top of his cage, and I have his cage right by windows. Yeah. And I have these wild birds outside that have made like a nest in the underside of the roof. They like poke, poked through and they're raising babies and I can hear them out there. One of the birds came back and was like fluttering right outside the window because he was trying to land on the cage right next to Cleo. And I was like, Cleo, you got to keep that singing up. You're attracting other birds Aww, here. That's awesome. Yeah, it was I, I was actually pretty cool to see. But uh, by the way, SMFL did now moving here. So Zunaid, what was your first target that you were trying to get out at here on SMFL? We got a nice volume expansion too. This is looking good. Yeah, 347 was my first target, which obviously we're above that now. 360 is approaching okay. as we're looking to break out. So keep in mind for the folks that are still in this one, uh, 390 is your pre-market high on this one here. And going back to Pack W, that's kind of pretty much at break even. Nothing really happening there. I'm going to move my stop loss up to about 489. As AI is, make, AI is making new highs. Sorry, I'm linking a help doc for one of my teammates here. No, you're good. You're good. I know we all got work. You're good. And there's new highs on SMFL. Nice trend line hold to the upside. We're going. Are we going to touch and say hello to the 390? Three twenty still acting as resistance for Google. That reminds me, I gotta check my phone and see what. Come on, there we go. The spy decided to touch that lower trend line and then it came right back up from it. All right. Sorry about that. Ticker MOT. You're fine, dude. Ticker MOTS. That one is unhalted. Don't know the story on this one, but nice little dollar hold and now 50 cent gain. 
Is it going to come back to test VWAP or is it going to come back to test this dollar? Which Crow, one is it going to be? Crow saying GDC looks like a trap. Crow, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you there. To me, this seems trappy until this top end of the range is taken out. Then we can see how it trades. Also want to see if that draws in more volume or do we just trade maybe a penny or two above that range and then it just kind of knifes back in. That to me would help determine if it's a trap. SMFL keeps going. Zunaid, I got to say that you absolutely identified the right stock here today. Uh, I, I'm also shaken by weird things I see with the level two. I know Jay has told us watching the level two is a waste. And in some cases that absolutely seems to be the case. Um, but I've done the same thing here. Uh, great job identifying one. That was also one from the list here. SMFL 370s now. Yep, appreciate that. 375, the high. Still looking to see if it'll go ahead and knock on the door of 390, which is a pre-market high that I've got here. CCL. Carnival? Yeah, that's Carnival. Nice move up there. How did it behave around 10? Didn't get you guys to, just saying to 1007. EPO is going down. So here, so ePower. So this is one we talked about. Rejected right at that 283. Coming down now, but here's the interesting thing. Actually, I'm, I might be a little late to this. This did actually knife down and find some support here. Now we popped back to the VWAP, and now it looks like we're going. This would have been a great trade here. Shame on me for being a little slow here uh, with my other broker. ePow lo e looks like it's trying to bounce here. We'll see if we get above that VWAP here. I'm seeing Tesla calls come in. Of course, Tesla had its investor presentation yesterday. Wally, are you out there uh, here this morning? Let me know if you're out there, Wally. Wally asked me yesterday in happy hour if I thought Tesla would be higher. I said, first of all, my ability to play Tesla or guess its price is pathetically bad. Uh, but I said, given the meeting and it's billed as a far-reaching interview and David Faber's talk and all of the stuff that was going on with Tesla. My gut said it was going to be higher. We are, in fact, higher here. Now we're seeing some calls come in for that. So Tesla calls going off. And it's going to approach the upper resistance of the 170. We'll see how it behaves after that. Uh, EPOW kind of rejected at its VWAP right there. SMFL still pressing those highs. 390 looks to be the next spot here. Wouldn't be shocked if we got a four test either. GDC still kind of hanging out in that one area. Wally is here. Okay, so Wally, so did you play it? We ended up getting Tesla a little bit higher here. Let me go ahead and bring it up. Tesla is higher here. It was actually higher in the after hours right after you asked me that. And it looks like we're getting some mo here today. Look at all these Tesla calls coming in. I guess there are there one of those was puts, but for most of these are calls here. Lots are in the several hundred. So decent sized lots on Tesla contracts. Focus at the moment for me is on Meta as it looks to stay above 340s. Uh, Smoke Tuna shouting out Octo. Uh, Octo coming to support. Actually looks like it's kind of beneath support, doesn't it? See if Octo can firm up here and give us a setup. Uh, wow, SMFL through four now. 411, your high print. Oh, man. Wow, Big that. move on SMFL. Big move there. Even on the minute, didn't even give a chance to go ahead and come back and knock on the door. Look at the volume that came in as soon as we popped four. Now, possibly we can get a retest at four or 390s. That would be interesting to see, but just a beautiful pop above. I'm mentioning TV. Target. Target, of course, had earnings here this morning. Target, a beat on EPS and a beat on sales, so top and bottom line beat. I uh, did have some comments here real quick on Target. I'll go ahead and read them. Um, Q, quarter two, EPS outlook, 130 to 170 versus the 193 estimate. So that's going to be a guy down there. That's got to hurt the stock. Target chair and CEO Brian Cornell says, as we look ahead, we now expect shrink to reduce this year's profitability by more than $500 million compared with last year. Shrink still a problem. Remember, Target's closing stores in some of these high crime areas. Target chair and CEO Brian Cornell says, while, we, while there are many potential sources of inventory shrink, theft, 
and organized retail crime are increasingly important drivers of the issue. So that is confirmed. Don't let anyone tell you that the crime is not a big deal. It is, and it is affecting some of these stocks. Now, looking at Target here, um, looking at the price here, Target is up 1.1% uh, here. So doing pretty good despite a kind of negative earnings report, or at least negative commentary. Let's put it that way. Mitch is in the barn. <laughs> uh, Mitch is on his way to VCon. That should be fun. Yeah, him and Chris, I believe, are the ones going. GDC breaking down real quick. Shout out to the crow who let you know really, really early that this felt trappy. We didn't have any of the signals that we normally do for a potential long side trade here. So good job on patience, not or uh, good job on using patience, not actually going after that. SMFL was definitely the trade high at 435 on SMFL. Uh, but yeah, GDC breaking down here. Great call on this being a trap, crow. That's a so trap here. It's a crap. Let's go. <laughs> Let's <love> go. A <laughs> couple of quick things on my end. So Meta, we're already in with 50 shares at uh, 239.92. Looking to purchase another 50 at 240.06. Currently about three cents away, four cents away. Now 10 cents away from getting filled. We'll see if that action goes into play. Uh, we'll probably have a stop loss. And there's the fill on it. I would say we'll give it about a dollar of a stop loss. So if it goes ahead and breaks below VWAP or so. Uh, we'll go ahead and get out of that one. But something else to keep in mind is also Tesla. Where's Tesla? Tesla knocked on the door of 170s, couldn't quite break above it, so we'll re-alert that one there. And uh, F -S -S -M -F -L to the upside, high of about 445s or so. Um, no retest of the 4 bucks. Well, actually, kind of. Yeah, it did kind of retest it at 405, but uh, nothing there exactly at 4, like 5 here. By the way, since it's below VWAP, I am going to go ahead and get out of pack w with a little bit of a loss so we're out of those and amd approaching the hundred dollars so we do have our buy orders there at a hundred dollars and six cents come on amd and i a nice on amd and by the way it's a couple of the uh smoke tuna talking about ai here ai big move out of the gate here but about a two dollar move well, 167 up seven percent here uh, early on AI, ticker AI. So AI is still a theme. Uh, we'll see if there are any other names that start trading up with this move here today. And here you go. Meta so far went ahead and tested that they're at the 240 area. We want to see this puppy hold. We don't want to see it to crack below. Would make me a little bit nervous. IMPL. As that one halted to the upside. My oh my, not sure what the news is there or if it's just a pump or a what. I do not know, but there's a pop on IMPL. Come on, Meta. Come on, Meta. Let's go in it. Let's get it going, Meta. And here's AMD approximately 20 cents away from us getting filled. Wisdom, have a good one. Uh, thanks for popping by here today. Have a great day. Good luck on your trading and stay green, my friend. Uh-oh, what's the alert, Zunaid? What do we Tesla got? What do we got? Crossing 170 to the upside. Let's see if we can go ahead and sustain ourselves above or not. But there you can see we're looking for a volume increase as it goes ahead and pops above 170, now 170.50s or so. Um, Octo, no, that's not the one I was looking at. Uh, OMH looks like it's coming back to the VWAP here. We'll see if that breaks the top off. OMH. CHPT hit a 52-week low. Is that charge point? Man, 52-week low, 801. That, that, that really dry. I remember that stock was 14 bucks or so. TSM calls coming in, coming in here. See a bunch of them. Who was mentioning TSM? Warren Buffett. No, someone here. Um, someone here just mentioned TSM. Raz, Mr. Buffett. Raz, it looks like you're trading TSM. Is getting some more call flow there. Ryan, Ryan, my man, I had a question yesterday, but you had already left for the day. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I missed you. Uh, with the rise in AI in the trading week, how soon until we see a chat GPT EPF? 
Yes, this is actually a really good question. We're, we're seeing a proliferation of a lot of ETFs out there. I don't think that it'll be called a chat GPT ETF, but I do think that we will start seeing AI ETFs. And I think that you're probably going to see one-to-one as well as levered ETFs to trade the entire sector. Um, we had a nice long discussion about ETFs in the happy hour yesterday, and we, we kind of compared it to the internet bubble uh, or the internet craze where you know companies were saying all these different things they could do with, with the uh, World Wide Web. And it looks to be the same thing here with um, AI. So I wouldn't be shocked if we had this as far as when. I don't have any specifics. If I get them, I would, of course, let you know. That's a really good question, though. Keep your eyes open for that, Ryan. My meta trade is red at the moment. Went in and added 50 shares as a near view app. All right, so Mats. <laughs> What's up? Good. No, nothing. Oh. I just missed my AMD M tree by a penny. Oh well, it's all you. Go ahead. Nope. I, I was just I, I was looking at Mots here. Crow calling uh, Mots dip buying. Mots is real is below VWAP, but I guess kind of at a support here. It'll be interesting to see if this is a good move here in Mots. This would be a great one for the small account challenge. I just don't feel great about it yet. Let me start looking. I'm gonna put you back here. Let me start looking. Went ahead and just got 50 shares of Tesla here at 170. Stop loss of 169.37. And it looks like what just happened. Uh, it looks like I am in AMD now. There we go. So we're in a few positions. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous. Matter of fact, here we'll go to a three box. And we've got. Market is Tesla. leaking. Stock pigeon, you're absolutely Gosh, right. Market trading down here. This is remember, this is one of the things I said I wanted to watch from the open. Uh, Dow was up 100 and some points. We're only up 60 points here now. Market really kind of selling off. We'll see if we end up going red or if we bounce from that red green line. Really kind of tempted here on export or uh, export. Excuse me, on knots. Now that you bring this up. AMD went ahead and closed out the gains that I had. Just a nice little hundred dollar bounce. It worked out well. I'm out. Got about 50, 60 cents on that one. I am out of AMD. All right. Maybe let's, let's see if we can get another trade going here, folks. And small account challenge. We want to follow the ask. All right, so we're up to 120 here on Mots. Let's see. I don't have a position yet. Looking to get 250 shares. Ryan, I like it under 110. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm trying. Remember, I'm trying to do the patience here. I want to see if it actually gets rejected at the VWAP here, if it crosses through it. Uh, good call, though, Crow. I'm going to look to purchase about 500 shares at 391 on SMFL. And the reason for that is because it's the pre-market high that it could be holding us holding a support. You've also got VWAP there as well. At the moment, we are about four cents away. Well, we were four cents away from getting filled. Now we're a little bit less than that, but. All right, so still watching Mots here. No position, seeing if we actually, there is the VWAP. So now we're moving through the VWAP here on Mots. Let's see if we get rejected. You were early on this one, Crow. This is a really good call. Uh, really good call here on Mots. Definitely having some shares trade hands here at the VWAP. So unsure which direction it's going to go yet. Here it comes back down. This is why we wait. This is why we try to be patient. Smash out those likes for our amazing community, for Zunaid and for Mumu, which of course is uh, sponsoring our program here. Also, great broker, and it allows you to get free stocks. And who doesn't like free stuff, Zunaid? I, think I love does. free stuff. You know what we need? We need some uh, Mumu gear that we can uh, go ahead. Oh, so you, I, I, I got, I got really, you know I got a mean? thirty. I got a 30 second story. What's one of up? the cannabis conferences we worked at, uh, I was working the Benzinga booth and one of the booths next to me was Pip Horticulture and they had their swag game was something else. They had a Yeti thermos with yeah. their branding on it. 
that they gave me and they gave me that like a sweater a hat i use that yeti thermos every weekend for golf it keeps the water ice cold in the sun for six hours at a time i mean it is phenomenal phenomenal so good swag game is something to uh good swag game is something to be proud of and you're right if moon has got a swag game get at me i'll i'll, I'll rep that yeah. stuff yeah right I'll, I'll wear it to the gym when i'm working i'll out. wear it to the minute. gym it's been a minute but you know i'll wear it to the barber which i am gonna go get a haircut today just saying you know my haircut is thursday by the way nice. so Look my shaggy top here is gonna be all cleaned up on thursday for friday show well gold bounce from 1970 uh What's the ticker? Are we looking at like gold, like gold, gold? No, we're not. Or are we looking at like the futures or the commodity rather? What's the what's the ticker? Can you help us out, uh, Matthew? I apologize. I've never in my life traded gold. You're welcome, Austin. I hope that you enjoy it. And may your future path be filled with profits. Speaking of profits, we've got um, Meta to the upside here as it goes ahead and breaks 240 again. We've got 150 shares at 239.87s. Uh, but again, we're looking to take gains. I'm gonna move this ticker down a little bit or move this. I'm gonna put your screen up. I appreciate that. I'm gonna run to the uh, washroom real quick. You got take it. Take your time. Yep, we sure yeah. do. 240.92 is where I'm looking to go ahead and lock in gains, right? So I want to still hold on to this, even though we're up. We were up about 60, 80 bucks, but I want, I want more. <laughs> Raz, that's funny. What a letdown! I know. What a letdown. Puts on Tesla. Yeah, this I might I might get out just because it's continuously rejecting the 170. And I'm not sure if it'll be able to pop above it or not. Yeah, I'm gonna get out. Lose lose my uh 12 bucks. I'm okay with that. Champagne on there. I don't know why I didn't have it at 169.50. That's on me. Maybe that was a bad level. Because you can see this level, resistance, popped above, held as support. So honestly, that's bad on me. I could have done a better job there. AMD, we tested the 100, and we got a nice little pop. If you think it's going to go red to green, yeah, you've got about another buck to go. Will AMD move back to the green? I have zero idea because before you get there, you've got 101 and VWAP that you have to get over that I anticipate being a little bit of resistance. So I'm not sure. I have no idea. Raz saying... <laughs> Raz saying, I heard free stuff in cannabis and you had my full attention, but then cold water was it. I didn't even realize what I was doing, but that's pretty funny stuff. It's messed up. It's messed up. Um, Crow, uh, I, yeah, I am I am watching this. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel great about it. That first VWAP move, we'll see if we end up getting it again. We didn't quite get to 110, um, but I'm, I'm still stocking it. I'm still stocking it. I really had to go to the bathroom. Ah, uh, X4, nice volume spike. Cleo, your play from yesterday. Oh, he's playing with his toy. He he's he's moved on from the market now. Oh my god, SMFL. Did you hit that? What a huge bounce. Oh, no, I didn't. I wanted to Is get filled at 391s and it came down that. to 90. Not zoomed it again. That's crazy, bro. That is crazy. I got to say, crazy, though, Zunaid, the way, the way I look at it is you're doing something right, dude, because you're getting these moves to come to where you're looking. And it's just it's just not. I know the frustration. Wow. Yeah. X4, by the way. Let's take a look at this. Should have just held, right, folks? We're right back to that 183 level. It'd be interesting to see if we actually take this out from yesterday. Let's see. So this is where we were at yesterday. Let's see if we take this out. X4, this one here working. I just, yeah, Cleo, you heard me mention X4, didn't you? <laughs> he knows. Cleo I'm gonna knows. go ahead and close out of my uh the limit order that I had to purchase here. Look how close again we got to getting filled, and we just couldn't. But I missed it by two pennies. So then I'm just done with it at this point. Um, because that two cent not fill would have given me at least 20 cents on 500 shares. So I'm out. I didn't, I'm not getting it back in that position just yet. Um, but those are your levels, right? 390, where you've got VWAP holding on tight. And 450 resistance. It's kind of knocked on the door three times and it hasn't been able to. It's 
Sorry, I just got a text that threw me off. Um, now Meta's here at VWAP. Uh, here's Mots, by the way. Mots looking like this is kind of breaking down a little bit. So we'll wait and see if we get one here, but I'm not too sure. X4 looks better here today. Oh, man, I wanted to. Never mind. A little too late. I was going to try to get some more meta around the uh, 399.50, but it already, 239.50, excuse me, but it already kind of popped up. By the way, uh, chat and community, Andrew, Le Andrew Lebos from our API team wants to say what's up to everybody. Really great guy here at Benzinga, someone that's really, really helped me throughout my career. Stand-up guy, great hard worker, wants to say what's up to the chat. Knows we got an incredible chat, wants to say what's up. What is up, pal? Come on, hold on to VWAP, will you? Just hold on to VWAP, will you? You guys saying G sit? Now that's an AI play, isn't it, Jay? G sit. Oh, uh, wow. was a G six. Sorry. Yeah, no, the airplane. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Something, something fly in my G six. You know. All I know is the one from Tropic Thunder, a G five. Yeah, a G five airplane. It's, it's just, it's so good. I gotta look that song up now. So fly in my G six. Hit the like for Andrew. Absolutely love it. That's right. Hit the like for Andrew Labos. We got a great team here. The MIA song is uh, Paper Planes, I think. Is that the one you're talking about? Becca? Oh, yeah. That's not the one I'm talking about. I was talking about the scene from Tropic Thunder, but I, I, I do know Paper Airplanes. By the way, SMFL, folks, this has given us multiple trades here today. Why isn't this working? Uh-oh. Let me refresh my platform here real quick. Yeah, it looks like one my browser was, stalled out. I'm going to go to you real quick. The one I was talking about was called Far East Movement, uh, a.k.a. like a G6, which I'm jamming to now. So if you see me uh, lose control, that's why. Oh, it's because I took it out of there we go. I fixed it. So here, let's take a look at SMFL here. This almost bouncing, I mean, 390 didn't quite hit 390, hit what, 393? Looks like it's going to try to take off 450 here on SMFL. If you guys are trading this good stuff, uh, my patience kept me out of this one, I'm afraid. There is Tesla to the upside. I was impatient, but if you were, that's now paying off as that trade is 50 cents in the money. And we've also got Meta looking to go above 240. Share my music. I don't know if this stream is monetized, so I don't want to like upset anything. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, those copyright. I also don't know what. Yeah, yeah, I also don't know what lyrics are on here, so I also don't want to get canceled. You know, but. Mott's at that 110 spot, but it doesn't look like it's got the gumption to go here. Let me see. Let me bring it up in my broker here. Man, this song came out 12 years ago. Holy shit. It's I'm amazing sure. when you listen to old songs like that, isn't it? Oh, my God. So, Mott's right here at 110. Nope, breaking down. There's a bid there at 108, a pretty big bid. So, what I, one of the things I'm watching for here, let me go ahead and bring this up. So you can see there's a there's a big uh, offer or there's a big bid right here, okay, right here at 107. If this bid gets hit into and holds, that might be a good catalyst for a swing back up. You can see there's also a big ask here at 111. So one of these blocks is going to have to fall to determine the next direction, in my opinion. Uh, 
Uh, Bayard here giving us some more context. Really appreciate this. A lot of short interest in SMFL as cost to borrow is going up. So what he's saying right there is that the cost to actually short right now, you're watching that change in real time, whereas the short interest that we take a look at is done through the filings and you don't actually get that in real time. So this is actually really, really helpful, Bayard. Yeah. Appreciate that. SMFL you know what, is also, fast, by the way, Raz. Sorry, Zinid. There was also interest on the long side, but you know some of us just didn't get filled. It's all right life okay look and on now, that knock knock though at that 450 what's up yeah i was just saying on on mots here we did take out that that big or part of that big bid that they brought in under and we haven't even hit the big ask yet so crow looks like you uh deciding early that you weren't going to trade this probably not going to get the bounce that we look for we'll probably look for something else here that's what i'm talking about with the patience by the way folks like I'm Zunaid's out here trading. He's calling things that are happening within a couple of pennies of what's going on. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait for a setup that I get. I don't want to burn one of these day trades if I don't have to. Um, but patience, I, I, Raz, you said it earlier, your patience is keeping you alive, Ryan. Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. You only need to get rich once in this life. So there's no reason to go trying to blow it early and rush it. What you going to do with that folk bitty? I thought you were about to say what you going to do when we bring your food, like the new Wendy's commercial, and I was literally going to lose it. <laughs> I didn't know that was a new Wendy's commercial. It's They're like ripping off bad boys. They're calling them bad boys. I mean, I, we're talking about it, so it's working, and that's what's frustrating me because I just – it's so silly and dumb that it makes me like, ah. Speaking of flying like a G6, there is – SMFL as it goes ahead and pops above the 450 all the way to 480s and then some of them there's 490 and there's five holds up maybe no smack down 485 46 491 it's trying to make a move above five again for a halt if you're trying to get in this play I think the closer you get it to about 450 is the better stop loss probably about 10 20 cents it is risky though no question about it as approximately 403 405 was your high on the day and man where do we trade this one? Here, let's see. Obviously, it's hindsight, but we purchased it at 322, and now it's at about five. But hey, we got a small piece of the pie, and there we go, above five. 502s, 507s were hit. Austin's uh, asking, yeah, about to answer. Yeah, go ahead. yeah hey, Ryan, are the paper trading challenge trades being listed somewhere, you guys? Okay, a couple of things, Austin. So first of all, when we're showing this account, this is actually not paper trading. This is a real account with real money in it. It is a small account, so the starting balance was only $500. Let me see if I can actually pull this up to show you. Uh, if I go to me, so uh, starting balance was 500. My current assets are at 578. But again, this is not paper trading. This is a real live account. One of the things that Mumu has is it's called paper folio where they have their own paper trading. We're not participating in this. You're welcome to. And in fact, for those of you that want to practice paper trading, this is probably a good way to do it as you can benchmark yourself against some of the other people that use Mumu, but that's not what we're doing. We have actual funded accounts that we're trying to trade and grow here, and we're trying to show you that process. So it's it's separate from the paper trading, but paper trading is available through Mumu for you. And while we're on the subject of that, besides the free and useful investment tools, Mumu is hosting the paper trading competition. The first prize is $1,500 cash coupons, and all of the participants will receive one month of Benzinga Pro for free. Also, if you open an account and deposit, you will receive up to 15 free stocks. So click the link or scan the code to get more information. Again, 15 free stocks just for opening an account with Moomoo and making your initial deposit. I can confirm I got one of those stocks. I'm still waiting on four of my other shares. So uh, that's it definitely works. If you're interested, click the link or the Q, scan the QR code. And if you're interested in Moomoo and the benefits it has to offer, click the link in the description and check out the link below for more information. So uh, we are sponsored by Moomoo. They is, it's been great. I actually really love this broker. This is not part of the read that I have to do or anything like that. I really like the platform, the mobile app, the fills from the broker, it's really been great for me. So I'm looking forward to continuing this alongside my main account. Uh, okay, yeah, so he, he just misspoke. Uh, 
I personally don't post my trades anywhere just because like I don't because my main account on Twitter is for esports stuff and it kind of get boggles with stock stuff. But I've only taken like two trades and unfortunately I'm down 200. So I've always been transparent about that. Uh, here, I'll go ahead and show mine up here in a minute. Um, Cause I went ahead and took a spy short and a meta short all day trades. It didn't work out. So I went ahead and exited uh, for about a thousand, not thousand, a hundred dollar loss on each one. So I'm down 200 bucks on my 500. Uh, by the way, I'm in a little bit of a debacle, if you will, because I'm short the spy as it goes ahead and retests VWAP in this trend line that I've got drawn. But I'm also kind of long meta. So it's like, hey, buddy, make up your mind. Are we going short or are we going long? I'm not I'm not quite sure myself. Um, but we'll see how it plays out. I am in a bigger position because I do have other uh, positions open somewhere else. So I am in a bigger position on meta. But this is just something that I'm keeping an eye on as well. Austin, so here's what I've been doing. Um, I have been posting trades as long as well as the screenshot of the broker for any trades that I make not on stream. When I'm on stream here, I go ahead and show them to you. So unfortunately, my list is not all inclusive because some of the day trades that I've taken live here, I just don't have the capacity to like go back and forth and create screenshots in the whole nine yards. But whenever I take a trade in that account, when I am not live here on YouTube, I post it on my Twitter handle. My Twitter handle is at our Faluna. Uh, let me see. Do, don't I have it in the uh, in my thing here? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so it's in the in the little corner there. At our Faluna is my Twitter handle. You can always catch up on the small account challenge things that happen outside of the show. But the best place to find that activity is to be here for the show. We're going to do most of the trading live while we're on the show. Are we still trading SMFL? I am not. I don't think Ryan has a position, nope. but we have been covering it from time to time, as we will just now. $5 rejection. Do we come back and test the 450s and see a move to the upside? Matter of fact, I might try to be cute here just to see if my theory works out. We're going to try to see if we can purchase 200 shares and have a stop loss. What is this? Approximately 433. Let's call it 433. Good little trade. Nothing too crazy. Hopefully it don't get wrecked and it just goes bankrupt on me. But let's see. Let's see what happens. MOTS. Might we be bouncing here on MOTS? Let's let's take a look. So maybe we did actually find some of the support, right? We kind of bounced off. This would have equated to be the pre-market high. Maybe we'll take some of this if we can take 187 out. Let's see. Do I burn another day trade here, Zunaid? Oh, $100, huh? I mean, a uh, dollar, huh? I Feel took like it. That. I took I it. Like All right, that. guys. Let's go ahead and see. I am now filled 250 shares at Mots at 109. We immediately were down. Uh, oh, my fill price was 108. Excuse me. So I'm up. So we are long Mots here. We're looking for a bounce back to the VWAP, and we will close this trade for a small gain. So we'll see what happens. If this breaks down through the low of day at 102, I would be out. I'll let you guys know. I'm going to, so you, here it is in Mumu. You can, let me just go back to the tab here. You can see that we are in this, right? 250 shares at 108. Uh, this is the position that I'm in, but I'm probably going to bring up pro so I can easily switch back between Zunaid and I. I will update you if I take a different position. Sounds good. We are up 50 bucks on the meta trade. We are up 20 bucks on the spy trade. Somehow it's working out, but I know, I know it's not going to stay that way. So either I make a decision to cut one of them or everything and I lock in the 80 bucks. I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to go ahead and close out my, no, I don't know. I don't know. Risky, Ryan. It is risky, Becca, but uh, the way I, you know, got to, got to put some risk out here. Got to have some type of exposure if I'm going to be able to make money. So we'll see. Now we're breaking down here on Mots. Uh, Crow Woo. says, good luck. Hope you get hot. Me too. But Crow, you might have been right about this one. So we shall see. All right. Meta went ahead and locked in those gains on the 100 shares. I might go ahead and lock in gains on the uh, 150 if we can. I mean, she's on the remaining 50 shares here as well as we approach for 240 92s. Come on. 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 All right, I'm going to go ahead and lock in the game. So we are out of meta. Spy is currently a break even. I'm going to go ahead and close out of those as well. All out of everything. Um, so meta, let's go ahead and pull up meta here. You can see meta popped up. That's when we got out. 
Here I can show my uh, executions for the folks at home. Close 100 shares at 71, close 50 shares at 64. So we are out of meta and we had purchased them at around the 240 and then we had added around this VWAP here as well. So No risk it, no biscuit. You got that right. Now we'll see. The volume is not as, on MOTS here, volume is not as high as I would like to see it. Uh, it does look like it's kind of coming in a little bit. But if we get a pop-up to the view app here, we can take it and move along to the next potential setup. So we'll see if we get it here. Going to stay in it. Uh, again, stop at 105. Uh, let's see. I had a little bit of trading beneath that. We'll see. Stop 10. I don't place the stop. I'm just talking about a mental stop. So I've got it between 102 and 105 here. Well, let's see if Mats can break. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to see if we can go ahead and get filled again on this meta at a hundred. So I want to see if we get a retest of that downside or not. Mots has some size here at 111. If that 111 block falls, this could pop and that could be it for the trade. So we're currently trying to chomp that 111 block. Really need to take that out to get some movement though. Keep an eye on NVIDIA. If it can go ahead and pop above and stay above this 298, especially on a retest, we could be on knock knock for NVIDIA. Tesla, by the way. Oh my goodness. Should have just stayed. Should have just stayed in Tesla. Wow. Two hundred puts, nice. I'm so sleepy this morning. I almost asked if you bought equity or options, but then I read it out again, and I realized, hey, dummy, it's an options trade. Cleo is trying to contact the crow. That would not surprise me. You doing okay over there, buddy? Oh yeah, he's trying to talk to the birds outside. Still watching Mots here, though. They moved that bid down one cent, so we'll see if this ends up going. Uh, armor plates. Mitch is going to VCon, so he's got a travel day. He's going to the uh, VCon event, so I'm sure we'll hear about that when he gets back. He's going to be gone for the rest of the week, but I believe he's scheduled to return on Monday, so you will see him back on Monday. Money Mitch will be back. In the meantime, Zunaid and I will be holding it down. Smash up the like if you like what Zunaid and I are doing. See, now this music that I'm listening to is just continuously going on a loop of uh, best of electro pop. And so now I'm listening to, uh, I don't know what song this is, to be honest. But it has Lady Gaga in it. All right, Mott's looking like it might roll over here. But we'll see. That 111 is still the spot on Mott's. And there's NVIDIA pop to the upside. Smoke Tune is saying, Ryan, when you're not in the chat, the small caps never move. Small caps have been tough to begin with, but I wish I had that much clout. A tall putty cat. I'll be honest. I don't feel great about this trade here on Mots, but I don't. I, I want it to at least materialize. I want to at least know if it works or it doesn't work. Is 
Still watching Mats here. I'm gonna go and try short here. On the spy. Can't we test the previous close? Yeah, the vol exactly, Matt. The volume dried up here. The only thing that I'm thinking here on Mots real quick is that if the volume, if we get like some volume flow in here, just that might be enough to take this out and move towards VWAP. So that's kind of what I'm waiting. I think it's lost its momentum for now. I agree. That's kind of why I'm feeling like it's going to roll over here. This trade's probably not going to work, which is going to be a bummer. Two, two uh, losses on day trades on Monday and Tuesday. Going to have to probably slow down here and and come up with something else this one I, I guess maybe i took it a little late in the day i guess trying to be patient uh but we'll see if it ends up working good news here is i didn't go in full size right i didn't use the entire account to do this i only went in for 250 shares uh, of a stock that's a dollar right so it's, it's not as if we're going to be losing our hat here i mean i'm down five dollars usd right now so not the end of the world even if we close this but of course we don't want to Apple's approaching the 171s. Kind of want to go short here. I am going to go short. Let me put the order in elsewhere. Well, it looks like I got failed on my meta, so give me a second. I'm going to manage this trade here. Uh, shoot. 105 now on Mats. All right, I am short uh, Apple. Um, I do have it on another broker, but just for transparency and just so we can see it visually, I'll just grab some shares here. There you go. And then we did go ahead and purchase some meta here at the 240s. 100 shares. Uh, chat doing a good job of calling this. IMMP did uh, move through its VWAP. Well, I had that VWAP at about 187, as high as two. What do we get a high print here? 209. Uh, so that looks and that looked pretty good there. IMPP from the list. Mott's uh, continuing to sell off here. 102, and we're going to close this. Uh, and then also SIEN, you guys are calling SIEN. A uh, yeah, nice little curl there. We'll see if that continues. Just waiting this trade out. I know it can be boring. I know it can be boring. I don't want to take it off, though, because I do think that this trade is going to end up being closed for a loss. So I don't really want to take it off my screen and have the loss get worse than the planned loss that I have for it. We don't want to turn a mistake into a bigger mistake. So I apologize for just focusing here on Mats. Well, SMFL went ahead and got me in the trade and cooked me out on my 10 cent stop loss. Now it's at VWAP. Perhaps that should have been a better entry. I should have known that. That's on me. Silly rabbit. Our short on Apple is practically a break even. Our short on the spy is down about 24 cents. And our meta long is hanging out in the money about 11 cents. Which way we're gonna go? Come on. Mots did try to get a volume pop, but it wasn't enough. So that did stop it from breaking down. So maybe keeping me in here a little bit more. Now we're down to 102. If we lose this, we're probably out. 
I'll be right back. There, we're through 102 to 101, back to 103. Well, kind of all over the place here. If that's the if that's the bottom, I don't want to sell at the bottom, so I want to give it an attempt to bounce here. We'll see if it works. Cleo singing to himself in the mirror. That makes me happy. Turn the stock around, Cleo. Turn Mots around. He's doing his best. All right, so getting to the decision point here on Mots. I think if we continue to have one more push down here, that's probably going to break it through the support, and then I'll be out here with a loss. Currently down $11, so nothing we can't recover from, uh, but definitely disappointing. Two missed day trades in a row here if we do, in fact, close this. Yep, we're down at a dollar here, and I am going to take that loss, and I'm out. So, uh, and now we're breaking down through a dollar here. So let's go ahead and recap the losing trade here. Unfortunately, uh, you can see here this is where I was buying, hoping for a move back up to VWAP. We actually just broke down here. Crow was right. Uh, momentum here was dead. Let me dismiss this. Um, so if we take a look here at the account itself, here you go. Here are going to be your fills, both the buy. Uh, here and the fill on the uh, sell so we lost eight cents here on 250 shares that accounts for uh $19.70 loss so definitely a bummer but again the lesson here at least for me um I, I definitely was a little I wanted to be patient I missed the really good move I'm not even really upset about that um with Mott's I definitely took it I, I kind of faked out by that bounce right I bought it near the top of the bounce we bounced off that 102, I think it was, uh, first, and we got back as high as 111, but we really couldn't break through that. So just bought it at the wrong time. We'll just try and sharpen it up for tomorrow. The good news here is that being down only 1970, uh, first of all, I think I'm still ahead of Mitch, tee uh, while well, he's not here, but um, still up on the account too, right? We started at $500. We're now down. Uh, we were up to 600. We're now down to 558. Tomorrow is a new day. Zunaid, what on earth are you doing? I was trying to make your moon a little bigger, but I made my face bigger. That's on me. <laughs> So there you go, folks. Not a good start to the week, but we are not going to give up. We are going to keep pressing forward here um, on the small account challenge. Still beating the S&P, though, by the way. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, EPOW, interestingly enough. Oh, let me go ahead and add this to the stream here. Uh, EPOW, um, we actually went through the view app here. It's trying to go higher. We'll see if we can get that 283. I'm definitely not going to burn my last day trade of the week here today. I'm definitely going to hang on to that. So I'm um, going to look for something else here. But uh, IMPP now again moving to the highs. Yeah, Crow saying, Ryan, the good moves have been coming in the afternoon. Crow, you're exactly right about this. I mean, if we take a look at the X4 move yesterday, we had a little back and forth at the beginning, but the real good move didn't come till the afternoon. I've seen a lot of these stocks that we've talked about in the morning then go on to pop in the afternoon. So you're absolutely right about that. Um, but I definitely want to try and, and execute some of these trades during the show. I mean, if we had hit SMFL today instead of MOTS, if I had gone after that, that would have been a nice trade. Right, that would have been a nice trade. Three from a three handle to a four handle. So it, we can find the moves. I'm just over two on the recent trades, but that's okay. Got Man, some I'm time out here to taking get that. forty cent gains on AMD when it pops a whole two dollars. It's all right. We got the gains, but boy, what a nice move off of the hundred dollar bounce. Hopefully, I'll make some money on it. I'm close to closing out my spy short here in a minute. Your heart. I'm only gonna break, break your, break, break your heart. That's what I'm jamming to right now, man. This this old school stuff's got me. What's interesting is Meta doesn't want to go higher than uh the 240s again. SMFL coming back in here. IMMP breaking its highs and continuing to go here. So IMMP, this working here too. 
again, Zunaid, you seem to be picking the right stocks. I seem to be picking the wrong time. So if we can just kind of blend together. that together here, we can have we a really profitable together, week together. We got to work together somehow. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and close out of my spy short taking L there. I lost 50 points. It should be 50 cents, 50 points. That'd be crazy. Uh, Ron calling out Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo here moving higher here. Good luck to any of you in the bank trade. It's still sticking away with that. Yeah, Becca saying, yeah, I agree with Crow on possible afternoon moves. I agree with both of you. I think we're all in the same camp. The afternoon moves have been good. Uh, and again, that's one of the reasons why I want to post some of these trades. But it's it's always great to hit one here live when we can see the process. We talk so much about process. It's not just about that number at the end of the day. IMMP continuing to go here. Wow, big move. Definitely picked the wrong stock here today. Which way do we go? Come on. Tesla hasn't come back to test the VWAP at all. SMFL now at almost four bucks. Rejection from five. And that $72 level that we called out on oil still holding on to be true. As you can see, resistance pop up, support, support, resistance, 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 resistance. I am PP. This is crazy. EPOW, you can see this actually broke down beneath its support. I don't really see anything else great here on the scanner. Yeah, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on Meta long and Apple shorts. Honestly, who knows what's going to happen at this point? Yeah, good trading here, Crow. You did a better job than I did here today. You hit MOTS and hit SMFL. That's really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. My mouse keeps it. What the? Oh, it looks like meta to the downside. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close out of meta here. I'm going to put your screen up here Come tonight on, real quick. Apple. Yeah, you're fine. I'm going to run to the washroom now, again. No worries. The only trade now that I have active is Apple short. But what's the spy going to do? Unfortunately, Meta just didn't go the way we wanted. <laughs> I assume you're talking about anytime you have a question, he dips. <laughs> he, he's trying to duck your questions, man. That's crazy, Ryan. All right, back. Sorry about that. You've got a question, Ryan, from Ryan. 
Ryan, be okay. And and he, he looks like he asked it right as I walked away. Don't worry, Ryan, I got gotcha. you. Uh, Ryan, BA had a nice little pop to the upside. Any news on the recognition of the 787? No, I didn't see any news here for BA. Interestingly enough, oh, Cleo, do you like Boeing? Leo might like Boeing, Ryan. Um, really quickly, just to kind of close the loop here on the news. Here's the news pane from Benzinga Pro today. Don't really see anything here. Um, airworthiness directive for all Boeing models. I don't really think that's it. Uh, Delta Airlines in talk with Airbus for a wide body aircraft. That's kind of a negative. Um, there was some recent negative unusual option activity in here, but I don't see any hard and fast news, Ryan. So nothing for that here today. Uh, but we'll keep up there and we'll keep checking in on Boeing. Boeing, excuse me. I think someone in the chat, I think it was Megan. No. Well, we were looking at this afternoon. Ah, uh, sorry. Just got a little bit of a movement coming in on Disney. Ooh, this is interesting. All right. I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, buy a little size here or little shares. And maybe Ooh. I'll come back and buy some more. Cleo loves Disney. Yep. He well, loves Disney. I bet you it's Cleo that went ahead and purchased $110 calls expiring June 21st. Ooh, this is 2024. We're going to cancel out of this trade. Nope. We ain't got time like that. We could be gone. Nope. All right. I got excited, but just to complete my thought though, uh, purchased approximately $600,000 worth of 110 calls expiring June 21st of 2024. I thought it was this year. So I got excited and hopped in the shares, but then I got out when I realized it's a whole year out. No, thank you. No, thanks. Yeah. Come on down Apple. Do you take any vitamins, Ryan? Uh, elderberry. Take elderberry, but I also use AG1 in the morning, and I use this red powder that's a knockoff of AG1, so I get a ton of that stuff. And it actually tastes really good. Like, it's not bad to drink. It's like, a you know, the green powder looks like it's bad, but it's not. The red powder actually tastes good. So, yeah, I do take vitamins, I guess. Gotcha. I need to get back in that. Why do you ever take leaps? I did take leaps way back when. Uh, matter of fact, the first leap I ever took in my life um, was Facebook. Forty dollar calls back in two thousand eleven, maybe when the stock was trading at twenty eight. I took forty dollar calls a year out or so, um, and obviously that went cha ching. But that's about it. Boy, let's take a look at Facebook way back when, shall we? This is going to bring back some college days. The stock was at $19.51 when I wanted to buy it, but I realized it's not like an add to cart thing. You had to put money in the account. And by the time I did that, it just kind of kept going. But let's go way back to my college days, shall we? Where is it? Wait, Meta doesn't go back that far? Yes, it does. Boy, I did not realize I was this old. Where is... So right around here is where I wanted to purchase Meta. But anyway, um, it was around 2012 or whatever when I had purchased uh, Leaps right around here for 40 bucks. So way back when. Did you make money off that trade? Yes. Yeah. It was like a 200% gainer or something like that. Nice. Big time. Yep. Smoke Tuna talking about RLX here. RLX are trading higher after the company reported year over year decrease in Q1 adjusted e pads and sales results. We did pop here on volume, but we're kind of hanging out around this 230 level. My uh, girlfriend at the time went ahead and purchased those same things with me because we were daredevils and then we made a lot of money and then she went to Europe with that money. And then she expected those type of gains every time. And I was like, I'm sorry. We got lucky. And then we broke up, you know? Sad. I'm kidding. That's not the reason we broke up. It'd be funny. I was like, how do I even handle this? Respond to that. <laughs> do I even handle this? I didn't this? even know what to say, folks. <laughs> Jeez. Smash up the likes from a man here. Yeah, you know, when the missus expects gains like that all the time, she is going to be disappointed. 
Yikes. But if you do like leaps, if you do like leaps, hey, I think Disney's a good one. Look at that. Continuing movement as you uh, see some upside there. Let's let's take a look at the daily for Disney, shall we? So if I were to get into leaps, I would go ahead and have my stop loss probably below 90. If it cracks 90, I'm out. That's how I'd look at it. Yeah, I see a couple of people talking about trading in college. Ryan, Beach Bum, I'm with both of you guys. I w I had an interest in the market and I read about things, but I was not actively trading. And had I have been, I feel like I would have made a lot of the stupid mistakes I made with an inconsequential amount of money very early on. And I would have been a little bit more seasoned. The other thing about trading is that it's made me more patient in my real life. I, I honestly believe it's made me a better person. Wow. And if I had done that in college, maybe I'd be further along uh, with that. So definitely, I, I'm I'm excited anytime I see young people getting involved in the market. That's awesome. Jay Rice, I was too drunk to trade in college. Probably, <laughs> probably my problem too, Jay. All right, comment of the day goes to Sydney. That was hilarious. Yo, real talk right here. Sydney Very has some, Sydney has some <laughs> great comments. She really comes in with with comments that are very very well placed. She leaped Zunaid. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Law Sydney Law. That is hilarious. Oh, uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, I mean the volume is definitely dying on SMFL. No question about that. As you can see, a decrease for the past thirty minutes or so. There's two opportunities to buy. 390s, in my opinion, which again, previous uh, pre-market highs, which held us support here, as you can tell. And then on this trend line, especially if it gets to 350. But besides that, yeah, I don't really see anything there. What's annoying is Apple is not really going anywhere and Meta is bouncing back. So I don't know which way to go, to be honest. So I'm probably not going to trade anything. Take care, Richard. Take care, Judge. Take care uh, of yourself, Judge. Good preferred, to see you again. But, you know, yep. Appreciate you, pal. IMHO trading also helps foster a savings and investment mindset. Bitcoin bouncing here, by the way. There's a pop on Pac W. Should we trade this one? I think we should trade this one. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're seeing now is called. I'm just going to buy something for fun. And we're going to throw 55 bucks at it. When he flies around, do you guys hear that? That's pretty cool. Ryan, question for you. Yeah. In our signals tool, it looks like we have obviously a price spike up, price spike down. We're able to filter that by market cap? Yes. Do you know? Yes. So let's, you know what, Zunaid, if you're going to ask me for that, we're going to demonstrate it live. This is what Zunaid's talking about. If you're going to use the price spike tool here, you click on the price spike, you can actually turn off up or down independently. Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys, full screen layout. Okay, so you can choose to only see price spikes up and or only see price spikes down or both. What Zunaid is asking for is, can you filter it? So the way the signals tool works is it does not allow you to filter the spike itself. So I can't say only show me spikes that are above 10%. But what I can do is I can come in here and add a market cap filter. So if I say something like I want it 1B, now I'm only looking at at least 1 billion market cap. Let's change that to 10 billion. And now you can see I'm getting some of the bigger price spikes here. So that's exactly how you do it, Zunaid. And actually, um, let me show you guys something else, all right? If you're a Benzinga Pro member, you always have access to our beta site. 
And our beta site allows you to test the new things that we're adding to Benzinga Pro. And since you mentioned the signals tool, one of the other things that we've added here is a count. So using Zunaid's example here, let's go ahead and turn off price spike down and leave price spike up. The new, the new thing that the price spike tool will do for you is it'll count how many uh, times this has produced a new uh signal. So in this case, we have it on price spike. If we were to turn off price spike and we were to go to session highs here, this gives you a running list of all of the different stocks that are hitting session highs and how many times it's done that. Now, the reason we added this is because it was direct feedback from a private equity veteran who's been using a Goldman Sachs tool from the 80s that does exactly this. He tells me it doesn't work in the pre-market though, and ours does. So it looks like we're a little bit ahead of that. And you can see here, like for example, HD has hit 141 new highs today. If we take a look at the chart, let's look at an intraday chart here. If I'm, look at this, look at the chart. Look at what Home Depot is doing. So this is one of the reasons why this was asked for. The higher the number of the session count, likely the more momentum. Let's test it out again. Here's Upstart. Look at these, look at how these charts are going from left to right with these high numbers of session highs. Look at Palantir. Who caught this Palantir, guys? That's a nice move up there. Yeah. So um, really good stuff. Zunay, I'm really glad that you asked that about the price spike and the filtering because we do get that question a lot. But look forward to some upgrades to the signals tool in the near future. We've actually already got one here. Um, and I, I'm actually really, really excited about this. So really, really cool stuff. I should have some more when I get to play around with it some more. Full disclosure here, this feature was released on beta today. So because some of the session was missed, these numbers might be off slightly. But Home Depot continues to set new highs here. Lows in sympathy with it as well. Here's another one, 205. Look at Tesla. 205 new session highs here today on Tesla. So anyway, um, this tool is, the numbers are not going to be accurate today or they're gonna be off slightly. They're gonna be a very, very good indication, but off slightly because we just started this today. But starting tomorrow, you can expect this to be dead on. So really, really cool stuff. Unsure when this feature is gonna make it to production, but just to kind of go back to that, Zunaid, for production, your initial question, yes, you can absolutely apply, apply a market cap filter to the price spike tool, and then you awesome. can choose if you wanna see up or down spikes. Great question. So we Awesome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, Nudes is helping out Tesla so much. Yeah, man, I still wish I was in it, but you know, it's all right. That's life. That is Megan life. hitting Palantir. Let's go, Megan. Great job. You're having a big, big day there. It's a nice little day trade there. Boy, I am so excited to get my hair cut, Ryan. Oh, my God. You know, I am actually, too. This I feel is, like I'm getting a little shaggy. The sideburns the get longest. a little bushy. Yeah, it's no good. This is crazy. Well, here's the thing though. I wanted to continue growing my hair so I could do the little hair flip, like the, like the, you know, that little nonsense. I have no idea what you're talking about, bro. Oh, come on. Uh, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and get out of my Apple trade and just say long meta. That's all I've got. If it works out great, if it doesn't, oh well. By the way, so the market that sold off in the morning here, let me actually pull up a chart of the SPY. We can take a look at it together. Don't have it in my recent list yet. If you take a look at the intraday, so here was that sell-off from SPY. Now, buyers caught it, and we've bounced. We're pretty much right back to where we were yesterday. So for me, no new direction today has been figured out based on the trading action. We'll see if that changes. Ryan, you know I just realized it's happening with my camera without realizing it's happening with my camera? I'm not looking at the camera, but my eyes are. So when you see me blink, you'll see my pupils move. And come back. Okay. So NVIDIA has this software, which I didn't. Okay, we're going to do this. Okay, look, I'm going to look here. I'm not looking at the camera. Now I am. Now I'm not. But NVIDIA has like this technology where I can look somewhere else and it'll look like I'm looking at the camera, but I'm not. I'm looking somewhere else. And it's the creepiest thing that is happening to me right now. That is kind of weird. That like I'm literally looking not at the camera, but I can see myself looking at the camera and it is the 
like weirdest thing. Look at this. It's, it's okay. Insane. You you keep tripping yourself out. You let us know how deep the rabbit hole goes when you meet Alice. Uh, we'll figure all oh, that out. Man. Ryan's saying, Ryan, I can recommend a great hair hairstyle for you. I'm gonna guess you're gonna say the marine buzz cut, and I I think I'm gonna pass yeah. on that. Um, but I think. Anyway, while he's asking Ryan, what do you think about Upstart? So I don't like Upstart's business. Let me just say that uh, right off the bat, the bat here. I really don't like Upstart's business. I don't really like it as a stock. But I say that after it had a huge move up, move back down, and then a move back up to this resistance point. So to me, Wally, for a trade, it looks like if you can take out that 2178, you might be good to go here on Upstart. Now, remember, this was a darling. This is down from 400 back at, at COVID. And if we look at it, it is basing here. We are trading sideways here on the daily chart. So maybe this is uh, not bad here. But for me, it's just not something that I like. So I don't really have an angle on it. But decent looking chart right now, Wally. Definitely has some strength. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get ready for It's so creepy looking at this thing. Hopefully it doesn't malfunction during the interview, but I'm going to go get ready for the interview. Um, and I will be back in about 10 minutes or so, Ryan, and you can head out then. Yeah. Sounds good to me, my man. See you. Just checking some of my missed messages here. Okay. Right, we'll take a look at that in a sec. Okay. Let's get back down to brass tacks here, folks. Uh, let's see what's going on. What do you folks want to do? It's not now, now that the adults in the room are gone, we get to determine what we're going to do. So if you guys want to have all that cookies and cake and junk and miss your bedtime, that's we, we can do that. But what else? Okay, GDC running. Let's, I guess, Crow, you're right. Let's focus in on some of the market happenings. Interestingly about GDC, we are right back up to this resistance area, 744. This has actually been on here for several days. So this list clearly, clearly, or excuse me, this level clearly a, uh, a, a important level there. So we'll see on GDC. It looks like it is trying to break this. Had a nice little battle that it made it through VWAP. Ah, big yank there back down and through VWAP to the other direction. So hopefully nobody got hurt there. Hopefully nobody got hurt there. Put some music. Armor plates. Normally, Mitch handles that. I don't know if I have everything hooked up to put on some music. I'm sorry about that. We do do that sometimes, but I just don't think I have the capability of doing that here today, I'm afraid. Uh, by the way, uh, GDC after that knife trying to bounce here, so maybe that's something. Let's look through the rest of the list here, see if we've got anything. Wetchy, seven cent stock up on relative volume. Have fun with that if you trade it, folks. IMP, IMMP, I almost did it again, but I caught myself there. IMMP right at that 222 level. CRVS, this is actually a nice little move here. Looking through the list here, GameStop on the list. Interesting. Ooh, nice day for GameStop. Joyce, we love that you're learning here. That's absolutely awesome. Smash up the likes. And real quick, while Zunaid's gone here, uh, let me go ahead and, and get this out of the way. Uh, again, uh, this program is, in fact, sponsored by Moomoo. Let me go ahead and get the branding up there. Boom, boom, boom. And get this in here. Here is your QR code. This Live trading show is sponsored by Moomoo, great new broker. And besides the free and useful investment tools, Moomoo is hosting a paper trading competition. First prize is $1,500 in cash coupons. And all of the participants will receive one month of Benzinga Pro for free. That's how we're finding these plays every day. Also, if you open an account and deposit, you'll receive up to 15 free stocks. Click the link or scan the code you see on your screen to get that done. Right now, you can get up to 15 free stocks just for opening an account and making the initial deposit. If you're interested, click on the QR code on your screen or click the link in the description below. If you're interested in Moomoo and the benefits has to offer, click that link. I don't know why that's on there twice. I'm sorry. Uh, check out the link down below for more information. So uh, all about clicking that link, go ahead and do it. I really do love this broker. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in here. Uh-oh, Cleo. Cleo getting fired up. 
Uh, you guys are talking about Zila. Is, wasn't that a penny stack, Zila? Oh, no, no. This did a reverse split. Wow, big move here. No wonder you guys are talking about it. By the way, we're approaching yesterday's intraday high. Let's see what happens here. Let me see if I can get you an exact value on that intraday high. 788. So 788 going to be your high here. Let's see what happens as Zila moves through that. By the way, IMPP knifing back to IMMP, excuse me, knifing back towards the VWAP. Uh, but I, I'm kind of interested here in Zila. Let's see if this moves. Uh, I'm missing out on Mots. Oh, is this going to be another one that ends up working after I stop out on it? That would kind of be frustrating, wouldn't it? Back to one. That's where we uh, actually sold, right? We sold at one, so we're not quite above it here. You were talking about the 15-minute chart. Let's take a look here. Actually, this does look like it's bottomed here on that 15-minute chart. We're getting this nice little hammer candle. Uh, on that bottom of that chart here. So maybe we do trade back up to the VWAP. But again, for me, strategy-wise, not going to blow another day trade. Uh, even if I was able to get that money back, there's wash sale uh, stuff in there that we have to worry about. And again, as far as process goes, trying to do a small account challenge in the way that most viewers would do it and trying to worry about some of those things. So I'm going to stay away from MOTS today. I tried earlier. Unfortunately, it was not meant to be. But I agree with your call, Smoke Tuna. Uh, this is definitely a bottoming candle here on that 15 min chart. SMFL 360s, you guys are saying, can we continue to break down here? Yeah, X4 X4 back on the look at this. Look at X4, man. Cleo, your call from yesterday was great, bro. Your call from yesterday was great. I just didn't do a good job. He looks all happy with himself, so that's really good. Uh, XFOR, great move here today. I noticed a lot of the chat were talking about this earlier. Awesome stuff. Hopefully you hit that. We have taken out that uh, high from the pre-market, and uh, we also took out that 183 level here today. More Tesla calls getting bought, by the way. More Tesla calls coming across the tape here. Mots breaking through one. Ah, oh, Mots, why are you going to do it to me? But this Zella move, you guys, you guys that caught this Zella move, great stuff here. Does have those higher lows on it. Nice looking chart. By the way, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, the folks at home, so Pack W, that trade ended up working out as that's in the green. Went ahead and popped up. We got it around five here. Let's go ahead and show our executions. <clears throat> we got 300 shares at 502. We exited here at 519. And then here we are. Uh, I'm going to do I, I'm going to go ahead and just close this puppy out right there on Meta. I'm going to go ahead and take those gains on Meta as well. Uh, we purchased 100 shares at 240.14 out at 69. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and lock in those gains as well because I don't want that to come down. Because the reason I did this is because you've got the meta trade moving up, but you've got SPY just kind of hanging out here, right? So nothing really happening there. Apple, which I'm about to sneeze here in a minute. Actually, I'm about to cough here in a minute. But Apple is just kind of right below you. the app as well. So nothing really happening in those. I want to take in my gains on meta and keep it moving. Uh, real quick, uh, great comment here from Manu. I'm learning a lot from you guys and you're fun as a bonus. Zunaid pulls up the hood when he's focused or upset and goes on ninja mode. Love you guys. So uh, really appreciate that. One of the things that we have all said from the very beginning, we wanted to give you something different. We're definitely trying to teach a process here. We're also definitely trying to call out movers, go over news that's moving stocks. But we want you folks to have fun. So we talk about sports. We talk about jokes. We tell you uh, stories from our personal lives, like me with my bird and all of that. So we definitely want this to be uh, a place that's different from everything else that you see on the internet. We show you our losses. We show you when we take losses. We do them right in front of you. So um Really, really appreciate that. Uh, really love hearing those comments. Hopefully, you continue to enjoy yourself, and we hope to see you back on a regular basis. Amen to that. Appreciate y'all for hanging out. We are going to be here for another few minutes. Um, but, you know, let's, let's kind of take a look around and see what else we can try sure. to play. So you've got Apple that's looking to go ahead and uh, bounce up above VWAP here. PacW, obviously, we talked about that one making new highs. Hasn't quite gotten to the pre-market highs, but good enough for me to take my gains. And oh my goodness, what happened to SMFL? Just to the downside. Now, the next area I'd look to play this would be around this trend line. That's where I would want to go ahead and try to get in on that one. What you got, Ryan, before we get going? Nothing. I think that was our guest joining for your interview. 
I was. I just didn't know if you had anything to wrap us up. No, I'm going to watch the market here. Remember, we did sell off initially. Uh, we kind of bounced back. I want to see where we close in relation to that trend line. We'll review that again here tomorrow. As a reminder, definitely follow me on Twitter. I will continue to update if I make any trades in the small account challenge when I'm not on the show. The only trade I can see myself making today is maybe swinging something overnight. If I do that, I will go ahead and tweet it. Uh, Zunaid, good luck with your interview. Can't wait for that. I'm going to get out of here. Oh, man, that NVIDIA plugin is messing with me now, too. That yeah. is hilarious, <laughs> folks. That is hilarious. Um, okay, anyway, Zunaid, really good luck on your interview. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. I appreciate it, pal. You go ahead and get on up out of here. And last ticker that we're going to take a look at, by the way, uh, Dr. Sharon G, just give me a thumbs up whenever you are ready, and we'll get you on the show, and we'll get this party started. Um, but we do have a last ticker that we're going to take a look at, and that's going to be AMAM. I think you just gave me a thumbs up there. I think that's that. That's what that. Okay, perfect. It moved a little too fast for me. Thirteen bucks would be a risk off area, so keep in, that in mind. Feel free to execute your own game plan. Thirteen support, fourteen resistance. May the trade be with you. But we're going to go ahead and switch things off here in a moment. Just give me a second. Da -da 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 -da. See, now that I'm by myself here, I gotta gotta do some things to get this party started. There we go. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and remove my lovely face here. All right. It's that time for us to go ahead and get on going with our interview. You know, we love talking to executives from publicly traded companies just so we can have your questions answered. And today we've got an interview with the founder and executive chairman, Dr. Shinji, who is uh, the founder and executive chairman of Ocean Biomedical, which is ticker OCEA. Dr. Shinji, pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks, and I appreciate you having me. Absolutely appreciate you for spending some time with us. I'd love to get into the nitty gritty things. I know you had some press releases that came out as well, but before we do any of that, if you could explain it to me like I'm five, what is it that your company does? So, so Nate, so one, you know, you know, my background is um, I was born in India, grew up in Chicago and, you know, went to undergrad and medical school out at Brown and did an MBA out at Stanford. And, um, you know, was fortunate enough to start several companies in aerospace and defense and healthcare and technology that went on to be publicly traded, you know, even ran for the U.S. Senate in Illinois. I think that knowledge base and experience really helped me co-found, you know, Ocean Biomedical. What we really do is we've come up with an innovative business model that allows Ocean to bridge the bench to bedside gap to help commercialize biopharma discoveries at leading universities and medical and research centers. You know, this is my way and our team to give back to society. My dad said, when you leave the world, try to leave it a better place. I love that saying. You definitely want to do that. Now, I know something interesting that I saw during, while doing research was bench to bedside gap. What is that? It's got my attention. So, you know, a lot of science gets stuck in what we call the so-called valley of death, where the discoveries that could be very commercially promising get stuck because the lack of funding or the lack of guidance and a lot of great therapeutic discoveries and vaccines never get developed or move forward. I think at Ocean Biomedical, we're trying to address this problem head on by providing financial support, guidance in conducting clinical trials, and working with regulatory bodies. Now, when, when it comes to like other biopharma space though, right, your competitors, how are you the ones with an advantage to make something great happen, especially for your investors? So I think that's a great question. I like to think of Ocean Biomedical as almost a category of one. We're the parent company of three biopharma platform assets or companies, each which could have a value of between 345 million to 4.1 you know, billion. I think our diversified platform and our new pi pipeline addresses high value, high indication needs. And this will allow us to continue to grow and develop these assets, not only in the U.S. and Europe. I appreciate that. Now, when it 
I believe you had a couple of press releases that came out recently as well. Would you mind uh, informing us about that a little bit? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think if you take a look at what Ocean Biomedical is trying to do, one is we're addressing issues like malaria and cancer. And let me kind of tell you why that is so important. The World Health Organization estimates that 241 million people every year will contact malaria. That's almost three out of four, you know, most of that are three out of four are children. And a half a million children will die from malaria this year. That just means today almost 1,320 kids will die. So a lot we must and can do better. A lot of our press releases, one, shows that we've developed a proprietary platform for infectious diseases, which is gonna to lead to promising vaccines and therapeutic candidates to treat these devastating illnesses. The other focuses on our unique discoveries in oncology. You know, unfortunately, everyone knows someone who suffered from cancer. Ocean Biomedical has a novel approach to tumor suppression, which is focused on controlling chitinase three like one or other immune checkpoint inhibitors. To give you an idea, our potential applications have mul are on multiple cancer pathways. Take glioblastoma, for example, or brain cancer. It affects 28,000 people in the US alone. And it's really sad that the single digit survival rate is only five years. The other area we're addressing is non-small cell lung cancer which is a leading cause of cancer death in the US. And I think what we've shown our research is that we believe we've discovered the master checkpoint immune inhibitor that will really stop these cancers in their track and has potential for pan-cancer applications. Yeah, pan-cancer I'm definitely familiar with, especially the company I worked with before. Uh, that was a big focus of theirs in terms of fundraising. As you're working to leave this world a better place, Finance is definitely something you're going to need, right? You need the financial things to make things happen. Are you working with the government in terms of getting any type of support from them, whether it's financially, through funds, through grants, or anything like that at the moment? No, no. It's a great question. So, you know, we've been fortunate to work with some great institutional investors that has allowed the company to go public. To give you an example, the company has received the science and the universities have received almost $129 million in grants, probably the most of any biopharma company. We have $59 million of um, a forward purchase agreement from Veller's Opportunity Fund, a $75 million share purchase agreement from White Line Capital. And the founder's sister, it's personally important to him because his sister has glioblastoma. And yesterday we announced a $25 million convertible note with Alto Opportunity Master Fund. I think it's one of the best financings in the market, even in the most bullish markets. This will really help accelerate our research and development programs as well, including some of our clinical development costs as we go forward. So you got the convertible note, it'll be going towards costs and different things like that. What is in the pipeline that this convertible note, the financing will kind of help you achieve? So it'll help take our discoveries in um, our therapeutic candidates from malaria vaccines to the stuff we talked about in oncology, the ones that are treating glioblastoma and non-smell lung cancer and progress them towards the clinic and helping treat patients. And is there a timeline for that at all that our viewers can kind of get an idea about, or is it just kind of like, hey, this is a long process? Any insight on that? No, we expect to file the INDs and, you know, within the next 12 to 18 months. Um, the research has already shown in human glioblastoma cells that there's almost a 90% you know, tumor, what we call killing, um, you know, rate. So it's been, it's been shown the data is very compelling, um, you know, going forward. I think, 
no, go ahead, go ahead, Zunay. I want if you had, you know, if you had more questions. And I well, no, I was, I was actually going to turn the floor over to you because we've talked about a lot of good things. We talked about your press release, what the company is looking to do, uh, bench to bet side, and also the convertible note. But I do want to turn the floor over to you uh, in case there's anything else that I missed out on that you want to talk to our viewers about. You know, I think we feel that Ocean Biomedical's team, the leadership and asset, personally can change the course of humanity. I think in 10 years from now, the discoveries that we've already made with our platforms stand to prevent people from dying of cancer, children from malaria, which is the number one killer in the world. And I think what's even you know, just as exciting is our unique business model, which allows us to continually grow our pipeline. Everything from leukemia to scleroderma or diabetes will be investigated in the future. So I think that's what makes the company, you know, very exciting. Um, you know, I think also what's fascinating about Ocean Biomedical, the team has worked together for a long time. Our history dates back almost three decades. Our co-founders, including myself, were classmates at Brown University and Stanford University with myself. And after graduation, we all went our separate ways, but we all developed expertise um, in science and in business, which helped us come together. So, you know, I think together, as you said, Zanin, we recognized that the major issue was that some of the best biopharma assets were stuck in this development purgatory. And Ocean was really addressed to you know, address this market inefficiency, to make sure these innovative assets go through research, reach the clinic, and can benefit the patients that need the most. And you know, maybe tell you a little bit about our team if you have a little bit more time. It can take maybe one or two more minutes. Please take your time. Is that you know, our CEO Elizabeth, who was my classmate um, at Stanford is a proven biotechnology veteran. Dr. Jack Elias was the former Dean of Medicine at Brown, and today is the current professor of translational science, medicine, and molecular biology. He also chairs our scientific advisory board. The other co-founder, Dr. Jake Curtis, is head of the MD PhD program at Brown, and he's our chief scientist. And we have other great executives like Daniel Baer, who was the head of Brown's technology transfer office. Our CFO went to Harvard Business School, was a top ranked equity analyst. So it's really a great team going forward with some of the best science you know, that's available. I love it. You're taking what can Brown do for you in a whole different level with all the teammates and classmates <laughs> you have from Brown University. That's awesome. Uh, well, hey, I appreciate you for joining us. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to more conversations as things get going in the pipeline as well. That is Dr. Shirin Jeev, who is the founder and executive chairman of Ocean Biomedical, ticker OCEA. Thank you so much, Doc, for hopping on. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me on. Really appreciate you taking the time. So thanks. Absolutely. No problem. You take care. Enjoy the rest of your day and you as well. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We appreciate you for joining us. And it's always great to have these conversations with executives and chairmen so we can have your questions answered. But as, as always, make sure you do your own due diligence. Look into the company. See if it's the right fit for your hard-earned money. It's interesting stuff that they're doing, especially with malaria. It's not fun stuff to deal with, nor is it to read about. But we appreciate you for tuning in. And we'll see.